These were the potters, and those that dwelt among plants and hedges. There they dwelt with the king for his work. Potters were the very highest grade of workers, but the king needed potters, and therefore they were in royal service. Although the material upon which they worked was nothing but clay, we too may be engaged in the most menial part of the Lord's work. But it is a great privilege to do anything for the king, and therefore we will abide in our calling, hoping that, although we have lain among the pots, yet shall we be as the wings of a dove covered with silver, and her feathers with yellow gold." The text tells us that those who dwelt among plants and hedges, having rough, rustic hedging and ditching work to do, they may have desired to live in the city amidst its life, society, and refinement, but they kept their appointed places, for they also were doing the king's work. The place of our habitation is fixed, and we are not to remove it from it out of whim and caprice, but seek to serve the Lord in it by being a blessing to those among whom we reside. These potters and gardeners had royal company, for they dwelt with the king, and although among hedges and plants, they dwelt with the king there. No lawful place or gracious occupation, however mean, can debar us from communion with our divine Lord. In visiting hovels, swarming lodging houses and workhouses or jails, we may go with the king. In all the work of faith, we may count upon Jesus' fellowship. It is when we are in his work that we may reckon upon his smile. Ye unknown workers who are occupied for your Lord, amid the dirt and wretchedness of the lowest of the low, be of good cheer, for jewels have been found among the dunghills. Ere now, earthen pots have been filled with heavenly treasure, and ill weeds have been transformed into precious flowers. Dwell ye with the king for his work, and when he writes his chronicles, your name shall be recorded. He humbled himself. Jesus is the great teacher of lowliness of heart. We need daily to learn of him. See the master taking a towel and washing his disciples' feet? Followers of Christ, wilt thou not humble thyself? See him as the servant of servants, and surely thou canst not be proud. Is not this sentence the compendium of his biography? He humbled himself. Was he not on earth always tripping off first one robe of honor and then another, till naked he was fastened to the cross, and there did he not empty out his inmost self, pouring out his lifeblood, giving up for all of us? till they laid him penniless in a borrowed grave? How low was our dear Redeemer bought? How then can we be proud? Stand at the foot of the cross and count the purple drops by which you have been cleansed. See the thorn crown, mark his scourged shoulders, still gushing within crimson rills. See hands and feet given up to rough iron, and his whole self to mockery and scorn. See the bitterness and pangs and throes of inward grief showing themselves in the outward frame. Hear the thrilling shriek, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And if you do not lie prostrate on the ground before that cross, you've never seen it. If you are not humbled in the presence of Jesus, you do not know him. You were so lost that nothing could save you but the sacrifice of God's only begotten. Think of that. And as Jesus stooped for you, bow yourself in lowliness at his feet. A sense of Christ's amazing love to us has a greater tendency to humble us than even a consciousness of our own guilt. May the Lord bring us in contemplation to Calvary. Then our position will no longer be that of the pompous man of pride, but we shall take the humble place of one who loves much because much has been forgiven him. Pride cannot live beneath the cross. Let us sit there and learn our lesson and then rise and carry it into practice.